welcome to Espresso and Electronics, quick sips of EDA wisdom. Today we have a fascinating topic which talks about how AI is going to impact and be applied to design and verification. I'm your host, Anika Sunda, and joining me today to explore this subject is John Rose, Product Engineering Group Director and a leading expert in AI applications in engineering. Welcome to the show, John. Thank you, Anika. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you, John. So I think let's dive right in. AI is a term which I'm sure all of you, you know, are hearing in bits and pieces, right? And it's a term that is getting thrown around a lot these days. So, John, can you give us a brief overview of how is it currently being applied to design and verification? Oh, wow. So that's a huge question. <laughs> um, so right now, I think EDA vendors are still trying to figure out what are the best places where AI can be applied to really help designers and, and verification engineers do their job. Um, right now, you're seeing a lot of AI in kind of the co-piloting um, way. So this is where the large language models are being used. And you have uh, tools coming in that um, can help designers or engineers create a lot of uh, templated kind of code and, and help them get their, their code written faster. Um, on the EDA side, there's much more AI going into the engines, right? So the synthesis engines and place around engines using AI to uh, prove uh, models faster or do interesting things in layout. On the verification side, similarly, there's um, AI being used to help solve uh, randomization problems or help explore design state spaces better or reduce the amount of uh, software verification that has to be done. So there's a lot of different areas that are going on. Um, and, and similarly, I guess, uh, you know, on the EDA space, we have uh, investment in reducing the amount of time it takes people to debug, you know, so looking at waveforms and how do you, uh, you know, how do you take all this vast quantity of data and and present it to engineers in, in ways that can help them hone in on problems faster? So, so there's many ways uh, where it's it's currently being used, and then I would say a a ton of research going on, figuring out where is really the big bang for the buck. I mean, it's a you know AI is a tool, and it's a a tool that provides a lot of uh, potential for sifting through huge amounts of data. And, and so, you know, the impetus on us is figuring out, well, what are the, the right places to apply that tool so that it has the most impact on users? Absolutely, John. So, I mean, that sounds like it could significantly, uh, you know, speed up your development cycles, right? I mean, design and verification engineers struggle a lot with you know, verification cycle or verification time reducing, and they're not able to meet that goal, right, in the stipulated time. Right. I, so I, I think there's no doubt AI is going to help in, in all the stages, right? For design, it's going to help designers remove a lot of the tedious work they have to do, you know, kind of... Uh, provide more abstraction to the design process. For verification engineers, I mean, their job is still gonna be there. <laughs> They're still gonna have to verify that the, the output from all of this magic AI stuff is doing the right thing. Um, but the machine learning and AI tools will hopefully be able to help them explore the corner cases better, you know, to really test that they're they're trying interesting things. This is one of the big difficulties in, in verification is, well, I can verify what I can think about, but can I like really get to the interesting corner cases that I might not have thought about, right? And can AI help me do that and help me find these bugs? And 
you know, AI on the design side is not going to make uh, chips perfect. So the verification engineers are still going to have to find, Absolutely. still going to have to find the bugs and, uh, and, and hopefully, you know, AI, again, it's about abstracting what we're currently doing and making it so that the verification engineers can um, get to these more difficult scenarios without having to do so much manual effort to figure out, well, how do I tweak things exactly to get there? And then, okay, maybe I got to the exact one case that I thought was interesting, but, you know, can I get to these other cases? So, so that's, that's what we're, we're trying to do. That's the hope. So John, if I understand, speaking of all these new possibilities, right? How do you really see AI shaping the future of design and verification? Yeah, so in the in the near term, it's what you're going to see is some incremental improvements in productivity. So, like I said, if you're talking about LLMs, it's going to be uh, helping to reduce the amount of tedious kind of work you have to do. Um, when you're talking about uh, formal verification or layout or any of these things you're talking about tools that are going to be more optimized. So they'll be faster. And anytime you're faster, that's better. Uh, with formal verification, for example, uh, likely you'll be able to consume much larger designs. So scalability is an issue for formal, but you know AI will likely be able to help with those types of things. So those are going to feel more like incremental improvements. And, and that's going to be true for software verification. You know, the... Uh, you'll you'll need less compute to do your your verification to do your your runs or maybe you'll uh, hone in on on bugs faster, which is all really good. Um, but that's a kind of a, a I, I guess I would call incremental improvement. The the promise is maybe ten years from now, uh, you know, we'll see these time scales, but where the AI is getting so much better at taking more abstract views of, of what you're trying to accomplish. So on the verification engineer side, uh, being able to put their specs into the LLM and then with mm -hmm. uh, relatively abstract and, and simple prompts, get out of of the, the tool, uh, some scenarios that are interesting, and then be able to, uh, if you're doing simulation, run those scenarios and um, using these kind of AI tools, understand what kind of interesting things did they do? What kinds of you know things are still left to be done? So it's, it, it, again, it kind of comes to the abstraction. So I, I think, Long term, what we're really seeing is uh, AI is going to potentially give us this big leap in abstraction, the same way as when we went from uh, transistor level design to RTL design, right? You know, skipping through kind of gate level design. Th that's a huge jump in abstraction. And that allows us to design bigger things, <laughs> more complex things with more, uh, more confidence that when we tape out these chips, they're going to work the way we want them to. So I, I think at the end of the day, that's what we're looking at. But, you know, when are we going to see this magic jump in abstraction? You know, that's not today, but it's definitely heading there. All the research and all the investment that the EDA companies are putting in and the, the research institutions are putting in, is heading that way so that, you know, in the next five to 10 years, I, I think that's what you'll see, you know, uh, Absolutely. engineers. We've, we've, yeah, we've already seen a lot of progress, right? It's actually in leaps and bounds. And I think the entire ecosystem is becoming so stronger, right? That definitely, I think AI and ML is, is going to be used. I mean, it's already being used in our day-to-day -day life. I'm sure all it will be used to maximize our productivity in all the tools that you know people are using to optimize their workflows. Yeah, I mean, the interesting thing for me, honestly, is there's things we can't right now even think about. That, that so, 
three or four years from now, someone is going to have an idea for some kind of an AI related product for verification or design that's going to revolutionize what we do. And it is not going to be <laughs> formal verification or software simulate. It's going to be something probably somehow related, but it will be new and novel and likely transformative. And so that's the fun. Like it's uh, the things we don't know yet is uh, is where I think people get excited. We we see all the the potential value today and how we can make incremental and even you know um, huge changes. But then there's that there's that magic that we don't know about yet. <laughs> that you know, four or five years <laughs> from now, you know, people are going to be like, "Wow, this is great." Ten years from now, people are going to be saying, "You did what when you verified chips?" So it's uh, so that's the fun. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, yeah. And also, John, I mean, you mentioned the challenges, right? I mean, so if we keep all those challenges in mind, what steps, in your opinion, can we take to ensure a positive future with AI and design and verification. You know, I mean, every technology has its pros and cons, right? I mean, keeping right. all the challenges in mind, what, in your opinion, can we do? Yeah, I mean, so that's a good question. Like, the, the big challenge, so there's a, a, a number of big challenges, right? So one is just scalability. So for AI and ML, for for these technologies to be most useful, we want a lot of data. The more data you get, the you know, the better these tools are going to be at, at helping you. Well, I mean, when you have a lot of data, you need a lot of compute to, to handle it. You know, this is expensive. Um, so you have those kinds of concerns. And, and this is true whether you're talking about LLMs or whether you're talking about some specialty uh model that's being created for a specific purpose. I mean, it's, um, you know, this is a, a challenge. Uh, the, the industry is already focusing on that challenge. I mean, this is, uh, you know, you have these companies making all of these um, neural engines to be able to handle this data much more efficiently, much faster, much lower power. So that's all good. That will continue. You have the security issues, right? People, you know, are very rightfully very careful about their own data. So any data that is used to create models, to fine tune models, that has to be well protected. And so we as an EDA industry or uh, the research community, I mean, you, you need to you need to make sure that the the right kind of um, things are in place so that if I'm a company that designs some novel chip, my IP doesn't kind of leak out into the the world so that someone else says, hey, I, I would like to design that chip. And then all of a sudden my my IP is out there. That that's not good. So you know, so we mostly it's about being cognizant of what these kinds of problems can be. And then make sure, you know, if uh, if we as an EDA company are providing some model that that model is is localized and secure and and the users, the company has the ability to to keep it contained the way they keep their IP contained today. Right. So none of these are insurmountable problems, but they're the kinds of things that people have to think about. Otherwise, we're going to have this wild west that might be exciting and fun, but is also going to, you know, create some chaos. So. Absolutely. Yeah. But really, thank you, John, for your insights. It's been a pleasure having you on the show. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Thanks for having me. All right, guys, so keep your circuits connected and your ideas flowing until we meet next time on Espresso and Electronics. Stay innovative.